There's a lot of differences between regular army and special operations, not least of which being the command, where regular army is under TRADOC, which is training and doctrine, special operations is under USASOC, which is United States Army Special Operation Command. So a lot of differences in rules, but what I want to talk about today is mission set and rules of engagement, or ROE. So when I was a scout deployed to Iraq in 0506 in regular army, the missions that we went on felt like they had no planning. Like our command saw us lying around and just sent us out to do some shit. Uh, so we would like go talk to this local leader, go listen to this MOS message, go run a raid based on this intel we got from our fucking tip line, go run security patrols out in Arab Jabour, which the only reason IEDs were out there is because we kept fucking going out there. So we're out there walking around like, hello, sir, madam, we're here for your safety. And they're like, we fucking wish you weren't. Okay. Uh, or my personal favorite, go look at this vehicle that looks like it has a bomb in it. Spoiler alert, the guy who called in the tip about the bomb is the guy who set the bomb there and he's calling us out to an ambush. Um, but when you get into contact in any of these situations, you're immediately hamstrung by regular army rules of engagement. And again, lots of shit in there, but there's two that are going to fuck you. One being, you can't engage the enemy unless they're actively trying to kill you. And the second being, if you lose visual contact, you can't re-engage the enemy unless they're trying to kill you. Which means some asshole in a man dress can shoot a fucking RPG at you, drop the launcher, walk around the side of a building, and he's effectively called timeout, and the worst you can do is detain him. All of this meant that we were basically just going out, getting our shit pushed in for a fucking year publicly, uh, and it wasn't great for morale, not great for mental health for the troops. Um, so now let's talk about special operations. During that deployment, I re-enlisted to reclass uh, as a crew chief for the 160th. And it actually wasn't that simple. So I, I reclassed as a 15 Tango, which is a Black Hawk crew chief. I went to maintenance school, found out about the 160th, went to their green platoon, which is like a mini SF selection. I made it through that, went to their maintenance, got selected to go to flights, Spent about six months doing flight training, went to a couple of schools, and then passed the test to become basic mission qualified, which then allowed you to deploy as a crew chief. Uh, so there's lots of middle shit there. And our mission was to take operators to targets and provide close air support in the form of target spotting or fires because we had the same armaments as an Apache. Plus, we had two six-barrel miniguns that shot two to 4,000 rounds of 7.62 per minute. Plus, we had the ability to carry packs in the back. Um, and every single mission we went on was a killer capture of a high-value target. And not just the target, but everybody that was there. So it would be like, capture the target, capture everybody that's there. Kill the target, capture everybody that's there. Capture the target, kill everybody that's there. Or kill fucking everything, let the operators out to sift through the rubble. Um, and funny side story, well, funny depending on your definition of funny, but our deployment cycles as far as the 160th and the operators weren't synced. So... When you would deploy with 160th, at some point during your deployment, you would get a new set of operators. And whenever the new guys came in, all the missions went to capture, capture. Until they chased some of those squirrely fuckers through the mountains of Afghanistan or at night in Iraq. And then all of a sudden, the intel that those guys had wasn't that important. And all the missions got very kill friendly. Anyway, back to the main point. When you're in special operations, you're either training or you're deployed. And everything that you train is everything that you do during deployment. There is no sticky bullshit in the middle. Um... And coming from regular army, and specifically those deployments, it was therapeutic to be able to go and actually execute on a target. There is no better feeling than going into something like that and just fucking wrecking shop. Uh, and now that I get to the end of this, I realize that I don't really have a point other than compare and contrast, you know, regular army or special operations. Uh, and if I have a conclusion, and this might be a hot take, uh, special operations is way fucking better. <laughs>